What are the causes of vascular occlusion and how do we avoid necrosis? This very important question every injector needs to know the answer to, but it's much more nuanced than you might think. In this show, we're going to dive into some of the theories about what can cause vascular compromise, and you may be surprised there are more than you think. On top of this, it's not always straightforward to diagnose. One of the problems I hear brought up by clinicians almost on a daily basis is how do you tell the difference between a bruise and impending necrosis? In this show, I'm going to discuss how to differentiate between those two situations. Before we dive in, if you're interested in learning a lot more about anatomy and joining a movement of like-minded medical clinicians, make sure you sign up to the waiting list for my new movement, you may think, like many clinicians, that if you put filler into an artery, you will instantly block it and stop blood flow, causing a necrotic injury. But there's a problem with this theory. Many surgeons, for example, Dr. Subio, when I interviewed him about his vascular occlusion, he explained how in surgery, they often remove whole sections of arteries or tie them off and never untie them, and it doesn't cause a necrotic injury. So it must be something other than filler staying in the main vessel that causes these necrotic injuries. I mean, that same live right towards the end, I pointed out that many cases of necrosis where you actually get tissue breakdown have only a delayed capillary refill and not a complete capillary refill. And these two positions, if you think about it, create a rather confusing situation. What is actually causing the issue? And I think it's probably quite a gray area, which is significant compromise in blood flow through partial blockage of the main vessel and blockage of some of the smaller vessels, but not a complete blockage that can still lead to necrosis, as well as some other mechanisms which we'll discuss. Now, many of these mechanisms are theoretical because they're very hard to prove in real cases what is causing the disruption in blood flow. But I'll give you some examples of case studies where I believe they indicate a potential cause for these different ways of causing necrosis. Let's start with an interesting one, which is pressure on the capillaries. So we know from general medicine that pressure sores occur simply when you put pressure, mechanical pressure, on the outside of a group of capillaries or vessels. So you get these on pressure points around the body. If you leave a patient in bed without moving for a long enough period, their skin will necrose. Now, I think the same thing happens in certain areas of the face, particularly in the midline for some reason. So the chin, the nose, and the labella all have a particular propensity to, to necrose in a different way. So what this looks like when you see a patient is an area of necrosis that tends to be round and is associated with high pressure tissues. So the chin can, in some patients, feel quite thick, the dermis of the chin, and a circular lesion around the surface of the chin underneath a pressure point is sometimes caused by high volume, high pressure, high G-prime dermal filler products. Similarly, in the, in the glabella, I've seen a number of cases where patients treating lines in the, in the glabella get a distinct black line, which doesn't track the supertrochlear artery. It's just over the section they injected, and you get a superficial necrosis. This also, for me, fits with a pressure that is caused by the filler on the capillaries rather than the artery itself, because otherwise you'd expect more of the area to be affected. The best example is still probably the nose. The tip of the nose has no major arteries in it. It is essentially a capillary bed. And with the Tinkerbell nose tip lift, there is a large number of patients who either have a red nose that persists for several weeks, sometimes with pain, and a small subsection of those patients will actually get some mild tissue breakdown. So they get pustules forming, some peeling of the skin. It tends to be less severe, but it can also be quite severe if the pressure is high enough and left for long enough that none of the dermis gets any blood supply. I don't believe these are caused by intravascular injection. I believe all these cases are potentially caused by high G prime products pushing on capillaries. The next situation is where filler compresses around the outside of the artery. Now there's some interesting insights coming from general medicine where occasionally compression of a vessel causes vasoconstriction. And one of the things that may be happening is that when vessels are traumatized, either with filler that is around them on the outside or filler that's partially inside them, is that you may then trigger an inflammatory process and vascular constriction or spasm that potentially could be a cause of necrosis. But really what's going on here is the vessel is tightening up due to either mechanical pressure of the filler or a combination of mechanical pressure plus vasoconstriction. Now, I'll never forget a particular case I saw where when I attended to help the clinician, there was mottling across an entire face. So the patient's whole face looked like they had blood flow restriction and the patient had had two nasolabial fold filler injections and I could see on ultrasound the filler sitting underneath a vessel and there was a vessel pumping. And the only thing I could think of that could cause this particular issue 
is that there had been vasoconstriction caused by trauma to the vessel. Now, coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, the patient also had Raynaud syndrome. So this is a phenomenon well known to cause vasoconstriction in the, in the digits. So I treated her with nifedipine and that patient made a full recovery. So what was interesting to me in this case was that vasoconstriction can clearly cause significant vascular compromise in terms of what we see clinically. And potentially this could have played out into some sort of necrosis, although I actually suspect the body would have kicked in and caused some vasodilation at some point, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but it is a potential cause. Vasoconstriction combined with mechanical pressure could be a cause of necrosis. The next interesting cause of a necrotic lesion would be venous occlusion. So thankfully, most of our face is a network. And it means that if you block a particular vein in one area, there are many other ways the blood can drain from the area. But you can imagine if the drainage is significantly impaired, that there wouldn't be enough of an exit route for the new blood to come in. And you could cause some form of necrotic injury caused by a decrease in outflow. Now, actually, the easiest place to understand this would probably be in the eye, which is more of a closed system, but it's quite hard to hit those veins. I did come across a very interesting case many years ago from Dr. Patrick Treacy, where a patient was injected with volbella in the nose, and this was linked with a venous sinus thrombosis that occurred a few days later, causing blindness. Venous sinus thrombosis is a known cause of blindness in medicine generally, but could it be triggered by a low molecular weight dermal filler that causes blood clotting? And this is yet another way that patients may suffer from a type of vascular occlusion, but this is purely about the venous system being affected by intravascular injection. In other parts of the face, there are cases where patients get a kind of bogginess, a swelling, um, a ruddiness, so there's a decrease in oxygen blood flow, but actual necrosis is less likely with venous occlusion, as we said, because there are multiple ways out, but the eyes, or if it's large enough, are a different story. So overall, I think it's a very hard way to cause necrosis, but there may be certain extremely rare situations where venous occlusion could also cause a necrotic injury. Let's have a look at the anatomy so that you can understand how a venous occlusion could potentially affect the drainage of the eye and cause blindness. If we look at the front of the skull here, you can see some of the veins that run within the orbit and how they connect quite closely to where the nose is. These veins here, if you injected enough filler and we follow it around here, you can see how an occlusion or a blood clot in this area, the base of the plexus, could potentially cause a decrease in venous drainage from both eyes. And that would be our worst case scenario, which is this inability for blood to leave the eye means the new fresh blood can also not enter the eye and these vessels here, which supply the retina, will not be able to replenish the blood flow to the eye. So a blockage or a clot to the, in the basal plexus causes decreased drainage in the eye and you get blindness. And this could be caused by a low viscosity product or a high viscosity product injected in the nose and passing into the basal plexus, causing inflammation, clotting, and potentially even an infection. And that ends up with a decrease in blood flow from the eye resulting in blindness. If you enjoyed that 3D model and want to learn a lot more about anatomy using this model and many hundreds of others that we've developed to teach anatomy, make sure you click the link and sign up for the waiting list down below for something very special that's coming.